in India, well, if you look at our past, sustainability was literally ingrained in everything we did. Respecting nature, minimizing waste, locally sourcing or looking for solutions. I think everything need not be reinvented. It would really help if we searched our own backyards for how to be sensitive towards the environment. We have tried to pay an ode to everything that's vintage or rediscovered. Welcome to Kaivine. Kai means hand and Kaivine means handcrafted. It's a house where traditional art is the starting point of a conversation at every nook. What we try to do through our designs is to amalgamate a contemporary living through a past sensibility of sustainability. And that's what we've brought in through this house. So this house is on a 350 square ad plot. It lies in the heart of uh, Bangalore. And it had a villa earlier, which belonged to the same clients. They are senior citizens. Now they wanted a smaller house so that it's easy to maintain, where they lead a very nice, happy, retired life. They turned it into floors and uh, they occupy the top floor now. This house belongs to the client more than it does to us. They wanted art to speak out from every corner and they had a lot of these vintage heirloom pieces which was part of the previous villa. So we had to ensure that we gave all these pieces a focal point yet we did not clutter the house and it still had to be an easy to maintain house. It's an old area, beautiful neighborhood full of trees and the front is east facing and it has actually got a thick foliage as well. This is where you enter the foyer from. There is a statue of Dakshina Murthy here. Dakshina Murthy is Shiva, but he needs to face south. So this is east, and that means that's the south, and that's that creates our first impression of the house. First floor and second floor are identical in nature because one has to be given out to rent, and the other one is where uh, the client had to occupy the space themselves. This is a second floor, and on the second floor, this is where you come up from or from the lift here. We've given a nice border here. The door that you see here is again a Chetanad door. And the minute you open that door, you are greeted by this absolutely gorgeous uh, painting of Ganesha in ochre hues. This is done by an artist called Shashi Warrior. And this is actually um, a style of painting known as the Guruvayur School of Art. We asked him to make it on canvas and we gave him the exact size and it was transported here. So colors have a own story, they have a therapeutic value. So we've used green and we've used ochre. So this is where we have our green Atangudi tile floor. A small patch, rest of it is all Kota stone. So this is the living room. Now the living room isn't too big because they didn't have too many formal guests to entertain. So we decided that we needed to create some sort of a partition here which would allow for a visual connectivity, yet it would give a seating some sort of a backdrop. It's a partition uh, that we've made using the local craft. It's Chennapatna toys. So it's an absolutely eco-friendly um, toy that they make using vegetable dyes and local colors. And even the lacquer that they use on the toys is derived from vegetables. Then we said, okay, let's do a nice handcrafted partition. And in it went these colorful, uh, this is a rattle. That's a top. These are keychains. And this is a fat guy who doesn't fall down. <laughs> so we put all of them together and that brings in an element of fun and color as soon as you come in. The puja room occupies the northeast corner.
Red is again an auspicious color. So we've given it a red Atangudi floor. The northeast has to be kept a little open compared to the rest of the house, that's Vastu. So the northeast is kind of recessed and it has lots of greens happening on it. This is east, so the morning sun comes in beautifully from this side. And this place we have given our yellow Atangudi floor patch. So what is so special about this style you may ask? Firstly, it's handmade. There is no fossil fuel that is used in the making of these tiles. It is cured in water and then sun dried for seven days and that's how you get this tile. And all the pigments that you see here, they are all vegetable colors that are mixed with cement and this tile is created. So the kitchen is in the southeast corner. It's the warmest corner of the house and the kitchen needs to stay dry for it to be healthy and clean. Now the kitchen is a lavish space because they love to cook and they love to entertain family members. So they wanted a very nice sorted kitchen. Then you have the heart of the house which has the dining room and the family room. Together they form one amalgamated bigger space. The dining comes here right next to the kitchen so you could kind of get into the foyer and either go into the public space or you could go into the private space of the house. It's actually a huge space and this was already done before we came into the picture. We wanted to ensure that somewhere the scale doesn't get too distorted. In Tamil homes you have something called a thinne. It's a stone ledge that acts as a partition. You could sit here, you could have, grab a, a plate and you know, if you have extra guests, they could be seated here as well. And then we put the sofa against this with the low back. Then you still had this huge gap here, which was around five feet of space. So we decided to create a nice wall of interest here, which is my vintage wall. They had so many of these small, tiny little things around the house. Each of them had a story behind it. For instance, this lamp uh, is a beautiful vintage lamp, almost 100 years old. And it's actually a Vastu lamp, lit for the well-being of the house. A South Indian house and coffee have a very strong relationship. This is a vintage coffee filter. This is a Davra tumbler and uh, a Lota, which is called Guja in Tamil. And that's the set that usually used to be given with coffee. So the clients are Tamilians who are settled in Bangalore. They've been here for so long that I think the cultural boundaries of what's Tamil and what's Kannada have blurred. And we have merged both these styles together through our art and craft intervention. The central space also has a huge balcony attached to it. There's a nice decorative wash basin that we've created here, but they wanted some privacy for this part of the balcony. So we created a partition here. We put in one of their old jewelers that they had. This entire space has gotten a beautiful ambience to it. It's like time travel, it's beautiful. And we also gave a nice jolly wall here on two sides to cut the sun. Now this is the master bedroom. You have the two guest bedrooms which are smaller in size. The master bedroom is a suite which is lavish. You know whenever you're trying to use a dressing table you somewhere somehow look for sunlight because daylight doesn't distort colors like artificial light does. So we decided to create a dressing table nook here. But the trick is that there's a window here and there's a dressing table. How do I put the mirror? We created a vintage solution, which is fix a mirror on two vertical teak wood pillars. And that's how the dressing design came up to be. The process day by day was getting more and more interesting as you had literally a partner in the client. When we did this house, our first thought was, how do we bring in what all artworks and what all craft do we weave into the story? They came up with a contact. I was suggesting Guruvayur School. They immediately said they found the artist. Technology that was is actually a boon that uh, helps us get in touch with them. All of them are usually on Instagram. The furniture is very contemporary in nature. Just that it has hints of uh, traditional materials on them. 
so we had to literally manage both the sides so that they would balance out and give it a very a comfortable look and not a claustrophobic look. I don't think sustainability is an option anymore. It is something that has to be ingrained deep within every project, every effort of ours. Kai Vinay is an effort towards that. A lot of construction workers are actually skilled craftsmen who leave their jobs in the village to come and seek employment in the construction industry where they become unskilled laborers. And what are they? They are actually skilled craftsmen from the village. So our job as architects, as designers, is to make these things more mainstream. And I think Kai Vinay for us is a beautiful opportunity for us to do what we truly believe in.